Welcome everyone, I'm Dale and this is Cinema Historia. Trained robbers, a railroad detective, and an investigation. This week we're going back to 1948 for a western film called Whispering Smith, starring Alan Ladd, Robert Preston, Brenda Marshall, and Donald Crisp. And this is directed by Leslie Fenton. So where does our story begin this week? Well it begins with Luke Smith, played by Alan Ladd. And he's known as Whispering, and he's a detective for the railroad sent to investigate a robbery. The Barton boys, Blake, Leroy, and Gabby, robbed a train and shot the guard. Murray Sinclair, an old friend of Smith's, is in charge of the railroad's wrecking crew. He's glad to see Smith, but during a gunfire confrontation with Leroy and Gabby, Smith is saved when a bullet is deflected by a harmonica in his pocket. The harmonica was given to him a long time ago by his sweetheart, Marion, played by Brenda Marshall, who is now Sinclair's wife. Smith is upset when finding out that Sinclair might be in partnership with Barney Rebstock, played by Donald Crisp, a rancher with a bad reputation. Whitney Dusang is a hired gun for Rebstock, who wants to see Smith dead. After getting fired from his railroad boss, Sinclair hires him to pull off a string of train holdups. So does Smith form a posse to stop the train robberies? Is there a shootout between two old friends? And does Marion find out she married the wrong man? <laughs> a great uh, American Western that was filmed in mid-1947 but not re released theatrically until February of 1949. The filmmakers uh, build a western town on five acres of the Paramount backlot at a cost of $70,000. It included 2,000 feet of railroad track on which authentic 1870 locomotives owned by Paramount were operated. The trains were converted from their original wood-burning fuel system to oil by their original owner. And the owner was the Virginia and Truckee Railroad of Carson City, Nevada. According to Variety, it was the 20th most popular film in the U.S. and Canada in 1949, and it was one of the most watched films of the year in the U.K. In 1950, the Writers Guild of America nominated this film for the best written American Western. And that it is. <laughs> and the trivia question this week, I actually have uh, two trivia questions. Were there a couple of firsts for actor Alan Ladd in this film? Were there a couple of firsts for actor Alan Ladd in this film? And was the set in this film ever reused? Was the set in this film ever reused? So, a little more history and the answer to our trivia questions. Coming up next. Now since our story revolves around trains, I thought it might be interesting to talk about the history of railroad lanterns. In particular, Kemp lanterns. So to go back in time, for nearly a hundred years the Kemp Manufacturing Company of Toronto and its predecessor and successors manufactured household metal products. In 1867, Thomas MacDonald founded his Dominion Tin and Stamping Works operating out of 153rd to 159th Queen Street East near George Street. McDonald was joined by Quebec-born Albert Kemp in 1885 to form the McDonald Kemp and Company. These men had a falling out though in 1888 so Albert brought in his brother William from Quebec and together formed the Kemp Manufacturing Company. In 1889 the Kemps released their first lantern named Cold Blast. The Kemp's lantern was used uh, because of a new 1899 patented corrugated elbow design. 
This design didn't last long, however, because in 1900, Kempt received another patent for a globe lift. And this model is a hard to find model. And the one you see beside me is a Kemp Railroad Lantern, and it's a 1900 model, very rare. It's 123 years old. So railway lanterns were used as tools by railway workers to communicate with each other. Before the world of radio, railway workers relied on hand signals, whistle signals, and at night, lanterns to communicate and give directions. And there were uh, a few different lens colors, and they were called railway globe colors. This information is based on the Grand Trunk Railway Operating Rules and General Procedures from 1911. So if it was a clear globe, a clear lantern was used as a direct signal from the conductor to the engineer. Raising and lowering vertically meant to proceed forward. If it was a red globe, like this one, a red lantern means stop. It meant a train was occupying the main line track and any approaching train needs to stop. A yellow globe, a yellow lantern, means to proceed with caution. It was also used to signify to an approaching train that the 3,000 foot distance was not suitable for six miles per hour. A green globe, a green lantern signified the end of a slow order and that full speed could be resumed. Also for watchmen stationed at public crossings to tell the public to stop as red meant for the train to stop. A blue blo a globe, uh, a blue lantern is used uh, at either end of the locomotive. It means there are men working and the train could not be moved until the lantern was removed. This rule has remained unchanged even to this day. So business kept growing for the Kemp brothers and in 1911 they changed the company name to the Steel Metal Products Manufacturing Company. William Kemp would continue to head this new company until his surprise death while on vacation in 1919. And I live just uh, east of uh, Toronto, so I remember when there was a Grand Trunk uh, Railroad uh, that ran through my area. Pretty interesting. And the answer to our uh, trivia questions this week. Uh, were there a couple of firsts for actor Alan Ladd in this film? Yes, there were a couple. Uh, it was Alan Ladd's first Western film, and it was his first movie in color. And was the set in this film ever reused? Yes, several times. The set was later reused in many TV shows and films, including the TV Western series Bonanza, which ran from 1959 to 1973. I remember this uh, TV series, actually. I loved it. Uh, it. It starred a Canadian actor, Lauren Green, who was from Ottawa, Ontario. <laughs> I, hope you like, uh, I hope you like my videos. And if you do, could you help keep my passion alive and subscribe? And if you're a new subscriber, a big thank you. I gotta go. I gotta catch a train. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I hope to see you back next week.